It's entitled Crossing the Great Divide. Oh, it's beautiful. And it's another one of my favorites. This one is my favorite for sharing the gospel. And that's probably because the Lord allowed me to lead an elderly lady to the Lord using this painting. That will be our story for today. But first, our memory verse. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. This elderly lady had spent her life thinking the cross of Christ was foolishness. In fact, I heard stories that she would throw her family out of the house if they started talking to, trying to talk to her about God. But that didn't stop them from praying. They continued to pray year after year. And eventually, a niece contacted me and requested that I would go and share the gospel with her. Um, I was very intimidated, but I decided that I would give it a try. I knocked on the door and uh, she recognized me a little bit because her son had done some work for us. So I, I had that in common. And right as I was uh, leaving to go visit her, I just grabbed one of uh, Jack's calendars and I gave it to her as a gift. And she was kind of intrigued by the art, especially whenever I told her that it had hidden pictures in it that I would need to explain to her. And so I said, open it up and just uh, find one that you would like me to explain. And she opened up to Crossing the Great Divide. <laughs> I just thanked God because I knew I would be able to easily share the gospel with her using this painting. I started by explaining that the barren landscape on the left side of the painting represented Earth and the lush green mountainside on the right side represented heaven, and the train was trying to get to heaven. I said, would you like to go to heaven? And she surprised me by saying, I've been thinking about that. At that point, I asked her, if she died today, did she know that she would go to heaven? And uh, she thought about it a minute and she said, I think so. And then I said, but if you were standing before the Lord and he said, why should I let you in? What would you say? And she thought a little longer and, and she said, I, I've been trying to live a better life. And I assured her, that's what we all think. In fact, this trestle represents our effort to build a bridge to heaven with good works, good enough, so that maybe somehow our good will outweigh our bad and God will say, oh, come on in. But you know what? That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I about fell out of my chair when she said, admittedly, yes, I have sinned. Just as the trestle is not strong enough to hold the weight of this bridge, our good works are not enough to get us to heaven. It says that we all sin, we all fall short. And it, the Bible even tells us in Romans 6.23 that the penalty for sin, even when sin, is death. You see the flames of hell that are awaiting us. That's the bad news. But the good news is here. You see this cross that crosses the great divide? Jesus Christ lived a perfect life. And then he looks at us and says, I will trade you. You give me all of your sin and your guilt and your shame, and I will give you my life. It's perfect. Then I told her, all you have to do is decide. Do you see the two crosses in the sky? One cross going one way and one the other. These could represent the two thieves who were on the cross beside Christ. One accepted his offer and who he was, and the other rejected. And we all must make a decision. And I told her that she could keep trusting in her own self-effort, or she could accept this gift of what Jesus did on the cross, and so to speak, receive a ticket to heaven. All she had to do was decide. 
Then I ask her, is there any reason you wouldn't want to pray right now and receive this gift? And she said, nope, no reason. And as we prayed, I knew that I was witnessing one more birth into this wonderful family of God. A few months later, I was uh, informed that she was in the hospital and I decided I'd go visit her. And I remember as I walked in, the thought crossed my mind, mm, do you think it really meant something to her? Was it real? And so I just asked her, hey, do you remember that day that I came and visited you in your home? And her face lit up and she smiled and I, I had such assurance when she said, I'll never forget that day. And a few months later, she passed from this world and I have no doubt that there will come a day when I will see her in heaven. Not because of my work, but because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. I felt like I was blessed to pluck a beautiful flower that had been watered, fertilized, and cared for by others, her family. And God just allowed me to be the one to see her bloom. So, what about you? If you died today, are you assured that you would go to heaven? You can be. The Bible tells us in Romans 10 that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Is there any reason you wouldn't want to call on him today and ask him to come into your life? And, and what about you who know the Lord, who, who have trusted him for many years? Is there someone that comes to your mind that you need to share Jesus with so that they can know that he is the only way to cross the Great Divide. There's a bridge to cross